Welcome everyone to Ascend TV, uh, Life on the Autism Spectrum. Today we have a uh, special report with both live footage as well as our usual interview segment on Best Buddies. Our guest uh, is Melissa Cagney, Program Supervisor for Northern California. And before we get into that and introduce you, Melissa, Will, uh, I want to see, are you wearing a special t-shirt today? As a matter of fact, I am. It, this, this is my best buddy shirt. I, I've had this shirt for years. Since today's, since today's episode's about best buddies, I'm wearing my best buddy shirt. I wear it all the time, not just at best buddies events. I encourage everyone to participate in best buddies or, or check out our, our events on YouTube. Excellent. Thank you very much. Well, would you like to introduce and uh, begin the discussion with our guest, Melissa? Melissa, um, tell us... Tell us about Best Buddies. Hi, Will. It's good to see you. Best Buddies International is a nonprofit 501c3 organization dedicated to establishing a global volunteer movement and ending the social, physical, and economic isolation of over 200 million individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities, also known as IDD. We do this through our four programs, one-to-one -one friendship, integrated employment, leadership development, and inclusive living. Our programs empower people with IDD by helping them form meaningful friendships with their peers, improve public speaking, secure su successful jobs, and improve public speaking, self-advocacy, and communication skills, and overall feel valued by society. Tell us about your background, how you got involved with Best Buddies. Yeah, I started working at Best Buddies a little over a year and a half ago as the program manager of mission expansion, where my main role was to bring Best Buddies programs to new schools. Uh, my background in disability awareness, acceptance, and advocacy started right here in the Bay Area when I was a volunteer at the Pomeroy Recreation and Rehabilitation Center in San Francisco when I was in high school. Since then, it's always been my my passion to have service work be at the forefront of what I do. So when I graduated from college, Best Buddies um, really aligned with my values and being able to support individuals both with and without disabilities. And tell us about how, how you've been supporting Best Buddies through Zoom. Yeah, so I'm the program supervisor of our friendship and leadership program, two out of the four in Sacramento and San Francisco. So our one-to-one -one friendship program, we have them in our school systems, in our community and online. And our leadership development program has been both virtually and in person and allowing us to provide resources for individuals, both with and without disabilities to be advocates and public speakers. Thank you very much, Will. So Melissa, uh, recently there was a very successful uh, Best Buddies walk. Can you tell us a little bit about that for our viewers who may not be familiar with it? Yeah, our Friendship Walk is one of our two annual events that we have. And since 2009, more than 150,000 people from across 60 cities in the United States have done this walk to raise awareness for inclusion, leadership development, integrated employment, and inclusive living for people with IDD. The, fund raise, the funds raised at the Friendship Walk help move our mission forward by funding our local Best Buddy program. So every dollar that is raised at the event goes back to the local community. It also provides us a unique opportunity to see our mission in action at the local level. Every dollar raised really makes us in a more inclusive and accepting place. Um, in San Francisco of 2022, this was our first Friendship Walk back in person since 2019, we raised over $139,000 thanks to the help of almost 500 volunteers. Now we will get into some footage from the walk where Will and I, uh, due to uh, our producers, Matthew's great assistance, uh, filmed some interviews with the participants there. And I think we'll run that right now. Hello again, everyone. We are finishing things up at a very successful 
uh, Best Buddies Walk. And to do so, I'm going to be interviewing, uh, once again, the co-chairs, uh, Wesley Lamb uh, and Ken Sito. And I will be turning it over to you, gentlemen. So, what are your thoughts about how did this event go? Ken? I actually think it went really smoothly. You know, the last couple of years we've been doing a virtual walk. And so everyone's kind of been doing their own thing wherever they are, which is just super, super convenient. But I have been really, really missing just the camaraderie and just the, 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 the friendliness and just the positive spirit of having everybody together and celebrating, you know, people with uh, intellectual and um, developmental disabilities and just the community itself. And having everybody together doing the walk with the, the, the cheering and you know, just the crowds. It's been tremendous, it's been great. And so I'm happy that we could do it again and looking forward to get doing it again next year. Excellent. I myself, just here for a little bit, felt the tremendous warmth and energy that you were talking about, Ken. So, uh, Wes, what are your final thoughts? You know, I think he went really, really well overall. You know, it wasn't like exactly like it was like years before, but you know, we had a great turnout for the event. I'm glad that things went well for the for the friendship walk, especially like the you know, it's great to see everybody back here in Gogate Park again. Excellent. Any ending thoughts and hopes for next year, gentlemen? Well, you know, we had such a beautiful day, and I'm hoping next year we're just going to have the same kind of perfect, beautiful day. And hopefully next year we'll have more people uh, hear about it and be involved and just uh, more companies and just more more to celebrate. I'm really looking forward to that. And you, Ed? You know, I hope more people would show up next year for the Fresh Walk we have like more, you know, performances on stage basically, you know, not not trying to compete against Coachella or anything like that. I mean, it's just a huge celebration for, you know, friendship, inclusion, all people of all abilities and and you know, people and with people with and without IED or intellectual intellectual developmental dis, disabilities for short. But I do hope that you know more people show up next year we'll have like more exciting things to come. Well thank you and over to you Will. What do you hope to expect from the friendship? What What do you hope to play a role? What do you ex, What do you hope to gain? What are your hopes for the autism community in 2022? You know, I, I I hope that this has helped people get, you know, be very aware of folks with uh, autism, and that uh, you know they learn that you know Natalie's speech or. Nathan's speech, sorry about that, was really pretty awesome and inspirational. And I hope that uh, people come away learning that people with autism are, you know, very valuable members of society. And having friendships with folks uh, with autism like yourself and, you know, like Nathan, it just enriches our lives, right? So. Yeah, I think it's more of an awareness and uh, you know familiarity with people, and just making folks with autism just much more welcome. How did what did you miss most from the friendship walk during the three-year hiatus? Oh, just the, to the gather the togetherness, and just being able to see everybody, being able to like you know just hug everybody and shake hands and just cheer along aside, with, alongside everybody. And now our cultural correspondent, uh, Stacey Kennedy, has a few questions for our guest. Yeah, hi, Melissa, good to see you. I, um, you know, due to any social activities and how, how your experiences have been over the years and current experiences as well with ambassadors and other supporters and other supervisors like you. Yeah, so our leadership development program where our ambassadors are housed, we actually just had a state ambassador training this past month. So there's three levels to an ambassador. There's a local level, a state level, and our global ambassador level. And anyone can be an ambassador. And that program, again, really helps empowers and educates individuals to be public speakers and advocates, not only for themselves, but their communities. And we always encourage these ambassadors to speak at multiple events if they're best buddies related or not. So an example of that would have been, we had an ambassador, Nathan Spring, speak at the Friendship Walk. Another example would be when we have 
diversity, equity, inclusion trainings for some of our employer partners within our integrated employment program. They will come to speak about their experiences and how they can make their workplace more inclusive. So any opportunity we have to have our volunteers speak on behalf of themselves is a lot more impactful than I think of myself as a staff member um, relaying the information on their behalf. Wonderful. And I have one other question. I did a little research and I noticed mm -hmm. something called living participants. So I understand, you know, best buddies, they pretty much hang out as a group, you know, and mm -hmm. with people within their within their community. Um, but I was wondering about like, it looks like there's somewhat of a one on one, uh, you know, buddies that hang out about maybe tw two or three times a month. I is that um, is is that active? Yeah, our inclusive living program is our newest pillar, and it provides a vibrant integrated living opportunity for individuals both with and without disabilities. We currently have two main locations in Washington, D.C. and Miami on the East Coast with the whole goal of bringing it back to Los Angeles in California in the near future. I understand that you and Will have participated in some of these events. Could you tell our viewers about your experience? I, I have been participating in Best Buddies for a decade. I've been I use I've been going I go to their in-person events at USF, such as the Ice Cream Social, the Thanksgiving event, and the talent show. Most of these events have come back in person recently. Best Buddies is starting to go back to the way they to the way it was. I'm. I usually participate in their events at USF every month. I, I go to as many events as po as possible. Excellent. What about you, Stacy? What, what's your participation been? So, um, I'd say back maybe uh, some years back, I started singing the national anthem at uh, the Best Buddies Friendship Walks here in San Francisco, uh, 2019, I believe. Um, I took my first trip to Hertz Castle. I was asked if I wanted to sing the national anthem there. So I basically pretty much be started becoming an ambassador during that time. And the, the travel there was amazing. I, I uh, met some incredible people. I even ma made a friend, you know, on the phone about a month beforehand. And we ended up being roommates during, during the uh, activities like we were doing. I uh, saw Gavin Newsom talk on stage. I, uh, Anthony Shriver, I got a picture next to Marie Shriver, right? Um, so I pretty much was just standing back and just looking and experiencing. And so it was nice to be a part of that. And also, uh, it was nice to amazing to see others from all over and even some, you know, I'm into, you know, I, into acting, you know, I've noticed some actors and actresses like from in LA that were supporters as well. I'm thinking, wow, how incredible is this? And yeah, so I, I sang the national anthem about twice during the Hertz Castle um, experience, and there was like bike, bicycling, and there was also walkathons and runathons or so. But um, Ashley Simmons, she's she's one of the one of those who got me involved. So thank you very much, Stacy. Now, Melissa, uh, understand you are. Uh, involved in a program called the uh, Friendship Program uh, with uh, events or centered out of USF. Could you tell our viewers about that, please? Yeah, so our Friendship Program offers social interactions for individuals, both with and without IDD, and really ensuring that our populations feel included because they often feel excluded and isolated. So inclusion is something that we do at Best Buddies. Um, in the Bay Area, we have almost 50 schools that participate in our programs, one of them being University of San Francisco. Best Buddies was founded in 1989, and with that, the University of San Francisco chapter was also founded in 1989. It's one of the oldest schools that we have that have been involved with Best Buddies over the course of the last three decades or so. Um, and we currently are partnered with the ARC of San Francisco to, in order to provide more opportunities for friendship and inclusion. Excellent. Where is the program uh, going in the near future, if you care to tell us, or if you have that information at it? Yeah, for our friendship program, we're continuing to expand. One of our newest elements of that is our elementary and middle school programs and really starting to focus on inclusion and talking about disability acceptance and appreciation at a young age. I think more often than not, we get individuals who are well into adulthood 
who had wished that they had a program like this growing up, um, hoping that it doesn't take 20, 30 years for someone to feel like they belong because they do. Um, we also just revamped our eBuddies system earlier this year. eBuddies, as the name may suggest, is our online friendship service where someone can be matched in a friendship with someone in our program in any location. So this is really great for people looking for additional friendships or maybe they're in a more remote location. I have an eBuddy, they live in Chicago. So I've been able to make a friend even though I've never been to Chicago before. Excellent, excellent. Very pleased to hear expanding uh, outward and, and to lower earlier levels as well. Thank you. Jennifer Brooks, our book correspondent, has a question for our guests as well. Yes, Melissa. I heard Will mention a talent show. I'm curious to know more about that. What kind of talents are shown and how do people enter the talent show? Yeah, I think I have some photos from the University of San Francisco talent show. Um, but that's just one of the events that a chapter can host for their members. Some other schools, they also host a Best Buddies prom. Some others have also hosted their own Best Buddies friendship walk. But I feel like Will will be the best one to answer how his experience with that talent show is. Will, okay. if you want to share a little bit more. The, the talent show is, is an event that Best Buddies puts on every year at USF. It, they they rent they rent one of the student un, student rooms at, at USF and then every best place participant can go up and and show, shows off their talent. I sang "Grenade" by Bruno Mars in one year. Melissa, I understand that uh, besides the various programs that you've mentioned, uh, Best Buddies offers an employment uh, services program. Could you tell us about that as well? Yeah, our integrated employment program helps secure jobs for individuals with IDD, allowing them to earn an income, pay taxes, and continue to be independent and support themselves. In California, we've been selected as one of the states to have our pre-employment transition services, also known as pre-ETS. And this provides a classroom-based employment training workshop for students with IDD between the ages of 14 and 21. This program aims to help students identify and develop their career goals as they prepare to enter the workforce. In San Francisco, we're almost halfway through our goal for providing placements for individuals in our programs this year. Excellent. And I do know by uh, working on the uh, Ascend Job Club that one of our Ascend members did receive employment, which he currently has, through the Best Buddies Employment Support Program. So thumbs up there. So Melissa, if people are interested in participating in Best Buddies, want to connect with the program or maybe reach out to you personally, how can they do that? That's a great question. Everyone can get involved in Best Buddies. There's a few ways that you can go about it. If you want to contact myself or another staff member directly, our emails are our first name, last name at bestbuddies.org. So mine would be Melissa Cagney at bestbuddies.org. You can also email our general email, California at bestbuddies.org. On our website, we have an events page where we host volunteer orientations once a month that go over more in depth the different opportunities we have across our programs. And from there, you can also connect with staff members to get more involved. What has been your favorite event to what has been your favorite event to participate in Best Buddies? Yeah, I think since working at Best Buddies, I've mostly been working in a virtual capacity up until recently. So I know that this may be an obvious answer, but our friendship walk that we did have that you've seen footage of was really being able to see our mission in action, see our students from our schools, see our ambassadors, our employer partners, our jobs participants, other volunteers all come together to see each other for the first time in a long time and be able to celebrate all that they've done to support inclusion in their community. And um, it was a very overwhelming experience to see the joy that people had on that day and seeing everyone's hard work pay off. Well, thank you very much, um, Melissa Cagney. Uh, kudos to you, to Best Buddies. And I know we'll be hearing uh, more from both of you in the near future. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for having us. I'm looking forward to it. We'll now be hearing from Jennifer Brooks, our uh, book correspondent. 
Uh, thank you, Keith. Today, I would like to tell you about a biography of Temple Grandin. This was written by the well-known science writer, Cy Montgomery. And this book was intended for children, but could be highly enjoyable for adults on the spectrum, especially for those with highly visual minds, because and first of all, the pages of different chapters come in different colors. Chapter three, what is autism, is a uh, slightly very pale shade of green. And, and moving on to chapter four, we get this nice baby blue color, which is actually quite, uh, quite refreshing from simply seeing the white on black, which can get tiring. And yeah, so also the chapters are very short and interspersed between these chapters. They have segments such as thinking differently, changing views of brain differences. Brain differences have always existed. For most of human history, they were ignored. Most of human history, brain differences didn't matter too much because everyone did the same kind of work and formal education as we know it was only invented in the 19th century. Not a very long time. Oh, they do have a picture of one of the facilities that Temple has designed. You can see Temple is uh, not only very highly visual, but also very creative to be able to think of something like this when nothing like it has existed before. So the book emphasizes Temple's childhood and adolescence and education, her struggle to get an education, her struggle to uh, fit in with her classmates. Eventually she was able to find friends through common interests, which is something that she commonly advises people to do when she's on speaking tours. And it also emphasizes her work with animals and her not only designing facilities to uh, process food animals more humanely, but uh, also working to improve animal welfare in general. She argues that if we are going to continue to eat animals, we owe it to the animals we use for food to give them the best lives that we can. And I certainly agree with that. The section they have titled Factory Farming by the Numbers, we learn that there are 190 million pet dogs, cats, birds, and reptiles combined in the US. That number is dwarfed by the number of animals raised and killed for meat, eggs, and milk in the United States, 10 billion, if you can believe. I know it's absolutely mind boggling <laughs> to think of that number. And yeah, here's a, here's a photo of Temple with some friendly pigs. So yeah, I, uh, I strongly recommend this book for both children and adults, not only does it help you learn about Temple Grandin, but it does so in a very uh, autism friendly way, short chapters and visual graphics. And that's it. We'll now turn to our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy. Thank you, Keith. Hello, everybody. Um, I have a few uh, events that I'd like to share for my cultural report today, uh, Saturday, June 18th, um, starting at 12 p.m. to 3 p.m., 
there's going to be this autistic um, pride and, and picnic um, rally on, um, it will take place in Santa Rosa, which will be, you know, obviously past the Golden Gate Bridge and past Marin and all. Um, yeah, and this will be at Howarth Park on Summerfield Road, Santa Rosa, where uh, people will gather to strengthen and advocate for their, our community. And you can bring your own food. Um, and there will be autistic vendors, speeches and information tables for other organizations that will provide resources. And they are not broken, but a valuable part of narrow diversity. So um, they deserve to be heard and exist as we all deserve to be heard and exist. And um, you can go to the Howarth Park website, uh, which is in Santa Rosa city.org. So again, that is happening Saturday, June 18th, the autistic pride pic picnic and rally. Saturday, July 2nd, from 11 to 1.30 p.m. There's going to be this skating at um, with the Autism Society, uh, San Francisco Bay Area. This event will be, well, it will take place in San Jose, usually where the San Jose Sharks usually play. And this is a different particular event for, um, um, for the autism community because um, Adaptive equipment is going to be allowed on the ice. And I believe everybody, you know, anybody is welcome, especially in the community, especially like families, they talk of like that. You know, the only thing though that they, um, they, they just say is to, um, to not invite friends attending without a disabled loved one, you know, because they wanna still make it about the community or so and $10 per participant. Aids on the ice must also have tickets. So um, one last thing uh, I wanted to mention every Tuesdays at, at San Francisco Stonestown's Galleria, which is on off of Winston Street and 19th Avenue, probably easier way to put it. It's right next to uh, San Francisco State University, right near it. There's a discount of tickets on Tuesdays uh, for whatever movie you pretty much want to see. Well, folks, uh, that's our program for this week of Ascend TV, Life on the Autism Spectrum. Until next time, I'm your co-host, Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. Stacey Kennedy. And I'm Jennifer Brooks. And I'm Melissa Cagney. Until next time, stay well and stay great. Mm -hmm.